So I make a ton of tutorials on Blender, which is a poly-based modeling software. Now we have polygons and we also have mathematical equations. And what separates the two is something like a CAD software, like Moi 3D, and something that's poly-based, like Blender. We have two completely different ways to model. The tutorials I make are based on polygons, but oftentimes CAD is a lot better at other things, especially what I'm about to show you in today's video. But let's be real, most of the time we can't be bothered going into a CAD software just to make a small little piece from our model. Just not the best time investment. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to create pretty similar results to CAD inside of Blender. Let's get started. So in this example, what I wanna do is create a trigger that is attached to this piece right here. So I've already kind of modeled this basic shape. You can use reference photos if you want to make something more accurate. But what I want to do here is, uh, first of all, let me bevel this. Let me apply the scale and then bevel this. So now we kind of have something that looks like a trigger. The issue here is we don't have that nice fusion to the mesh. You don't have that nice bevel that indicates it's connected. This is where CAD would be a lot better for this type of situation, as you will see in a second. But I don't want to scare you away from polygons because we can get the same results pretty easily. So what I want to do is I want to fuse this piece to the main mesh. We can use a Boolean modifier for this, a union. Just press Control plus on the numpad for that. And what I want to do is, let me drag this to the top of the stack here, just like that. There we go. And what I want to do is I want to apply this Boolean so I have access to the geometry. So right now we kind of have a small indication that it's fused to the mesh, but it's a pretty small bevel, it doesn't look as natural. So what I want to do is get something that looks more like this, you know, a much larger bevel. And already you can see the downside of poly-based modeling. When you get into situations like this, you get a lot of crazy artifacts and overlaps and little bit annoying but let me show you how to tackle it so the first thing I want to do is I want to figure out where exactly are these problems occurring and the first one I see is right here with these edges I'm honestly just going to dissolve these two out or what I could do is so we'll just dissolve those out that's fine and then maybe right here we could merge these two vertices together and then we'll go up here to the top and get an, another um, different connection point. So maybe right here, we'll join that and then get rid of that one. So basically what we're trying to do in this case is get some better guiding edges for Blender. So that way when we bevel it, it doesn't immediately overlap. And this is already quite a bit better. Now there are gonna be downsides because we're still gonna have shading errors, especially like you can kind of see up here, but that's kind of a limitation. So the first thing I want to do is kind of get those vertices merged together that they merge, which we have done. And now what I want to do is bevel. So control B and you're going to see it's a little bit better, but we're still getting some overlaps over here in this area, right? So maybe we'll connect that here instead. Now, once you can kind of identify where exactly these overlaps are occurring, what you can do in Blender is add something called guiding edges. So for example, since this vertex, since this edge here doesn't continue onto this face, Blender doesn't really know where to guide the bevel along. So it's just going to kind of randomly make a new edge for us. But what we could do instead is we could guide Blender, maybe slide this over a bit, and make an edge that kind of guides the bevel. So if I cut a knife like that, now when I try to bevel, the bevel is going to follow along that edge and give us a lot more buffer, right? We're gonna do the same exact thing down here if we need to. Let's see how much buffer we have. So you can see we can't bevel too much before we get that overlap. So what we're gonna do is give Blender another guiding edge with the knife tool, just like that. And now we have a lot more space before it starts overlapping. So what we can do is we can select this entire set of edges here and give a much larger bevel before we get that crazy overlapping, right? So we can get something kind of like this. And you're going to see this looks a heck of a lot better because it actually looks like it's fused to the mesh. So I think this is a decent size. What I could do is sometimes you can turn off loop slide and it'll give you different results. But in this case, 
not really. I'm also going to add a guiding edge for this vertex as well, just because I think we'll have a little bit more space. Maybe slide that one down and then give a guiding edge to this one. And I think that should be enough for us to add a decent size bevel. So control B. And now we have a really large bevel with no source of overlaps. Very nice. Looks good. Now we are going to have a few shading errors down here. Not much we can do except maybe add some connection points. And sometimes that'll help mitigate the shading. So I can maybe go in here and do something like this. Sometimes that'll help mitigate it, but in this case, not really. Um, what I could try to do is, let's see, what I could try to do is just make some proximity loops kind of cut in. And it'll just kind of push the shading errors into that bevel a little bit better. And same thing for the top here. I don't have any massive errors on the top, but you know, we're gonna have a little bit just because of this end gone here on the curved surface. So compared to something like CAD where we're not gonna have those shading errors, well, we're gonna have them in poly-based modeling software. And the only way to fix it is really to retopologize, isolate the shading, or to use a normal transfer. Those are our three main solutions. I have tutorials on each of them, but this isn't really that big of a deal because the shading isn't really that noticeable, and I'm happy with that. So now what we need to do, once we've kind of fused this together to the mesh, is we can basically cut in a hole. So I could go here to the bottom, you know, scale this down, and you could continue your workflow just like you were doing before. You could do something kind of like this. You know, you can cut in a shape. Maybe bevel this area, you get the idea, just like that. So the point of this video wasn't to really show you how to model a trigger, but to show you an example of where polygons can actually be a little bit less powerful compared to something like a CAD software where you can bevel at any angle really, and you're not going to get those crazy nasty shading artifacts because it uses mathematical equations to calculate the surface as opposed to polygons which define the surface. But I want to show you guys that you can get similar results in poly-based modeling software even if it kind of falls apart in some areas. So overall, I still prefer Blender over any CAD software. It's my preferred way of modeling. It's my workflow the way I like it. Not everyone's going to agree, but that's fine. But I want to show you how you can actually bypass those tricky situations in Blender and use the topology to your advantage to fix those problems rather than run away from them. So what we have here is a really nice fusion to the mesh and we have something that almost looks like it was modeled in CAD, a really clean bevel on top of this curved surface. Very nice. So I hope this video was valuable to you and I hope it gave you some ideas for how to tackle these more tricky situations in Blender because they are going to come up from time to time. So thanks so much for watching. If the video helped, give me a thumbs up. It'll really help me out. And check out our website. We have a ton of cool hard surface modeling resources on there that I think you'll enjoy, blenderbros.com. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.